Welcome to the new Periodic Reporting Questionnaire tutorial. I'm guessing you're here because you have to fill out a Periodic Reporting Questionnaire, which is an exercise involving all World Heritage Site Managers over the next five years. It might seem complex at first, but in fact it's very straightforward. I'm here to help you understand how to fill out the online questionnaire. I'm going to walk you through some of the main technical features, the kind of questions asked, and what information you should provide, and of course what to do if you have any problems. So here we are in the questionnaire. It's made up of two sections, section 1 and section 2. Section 1 contains questions about national implementation of the World Heritage Convention and is filled out by the national focal point for world heritage in the country, while section 2 focuses entirely on individual world heritage properties and is filled out by world heritage site managers. For this video tutorial, we're going to focus on section 2 of the questionnaire, which is about world heritage properties. But if you're interested in section 1, you can still learn a lot about the technical features of the questionnaire. So let's jump right in. First, some quick facts about the questionnaire. It should be completed in English or French and can only be completed online. You can export the questionnaire in Word or PDF at any point, both before and after filling it in but some features can only work in the online format. Overall, you will have about 10 months to fill in the questionnaire and to get it validated by your national focal point. The questionnaire itself can be filled in in a couple of hours, but gathering and preparing the information takes a lot longer. The questionnaire has different types of questions, like validate and update questions, where you check existing information, yes and no questions, rating scales, multiple choice questions, and comment boxes with word limits. When it's time for you to fill out your periodic reporting questionnaire, the World Heritage Centre will send you an email with instructions on how to create your username and password, i.e. your login details. If you forget your login details, you can request new ones by clicking here. You can then access the questionnaire at the address on the screen. Once logged in, you will notice that you will have your own personalised questionnaire. The questionnaire will have your, the name of your property here. Your personalised questionnaire may already contain answers to certain questions. These answers have been pre-filled by the World Heritage Centre from information we have on record. If there are no pre-filled answers in your questionnaire, don't worry. This probably means that you're either a newly inscribed property on the World Heritage List and or it's the first time you're filling out a questionnaire or simply that the information on record could not be included. One of the first things you'll see when you access the online questionnaire is the navigation pane. The list is extendable so that you see each question and sub-question contained in the 15 chapters. As you work your way through the questionnaire, you can see your progress on the top progress bar, but also along the list of questions in the navigation bar. The questionnaire contains a wide range of questions on topics relevant to world heritage. As a heritage professional, you'll be very familiar with a lot of the themes. But world heritage is an extensive topic and touches upon nature, science, history, the arts, management, governance, geography, global efforts for peace and many more. And so taking this into consideration, we don't expect you to have the expertise to immediately respond to every single question. For this reason, we have developed a guidance tool within the questionnaire. The guidance helps to explain some of the key concepts and more complex topics and also provides links to relevant web pages or publications, so it's a great learning tool. When a question has additional guidance, you will see a guidance tab in the question bar. It is linked to a glossary of world heritage terms, where you can find clear definitions of common world heritage terminology. What is the World Heritage Committee? And what exactly is OUV? The answer is here. Now let's take a quick look at the content of section two of the questionnaire. Chapter 1 asks you for information on the name, year of inscription, geographic coordinates, maps and social media presence of your property, and also asks who has been involved in preparing the report. Chapter 2 asks whether your property is protected under other conventions and programmes. Chapter 3 looks at the outstanding universal value OUV, of your property and asks you about the attributes that make that outstanding universal value and how these are being conserved. Chapter 4 is where you can give information about the positive and negative effects of factors affecting your World Heritage property. The list covers a huge range of potential factors and threats. The list of factors is divided into 14 topics which in turn have subtopics. For example, the first topic, Building and Development, has among other subtopics, Commercial Development, Housing, Industrial Areas, etc. You will be asked if the topic is relevant to your property. 
If a factor is relevant, you will indicate whether it is positively and or negatively affecting your property, whether the impact of the factor is current and or potential and where it is coming from, either from within the boundaries of the property or outside the property, meaning within the buffer zone or further. You should also say whether you think it is increasing or decreasing. And if you feel that it's an important issue and you want to give further details, you have the opportunity to do so at the end of each of the 14 topics. It is important to remember that this chapter 4 is interactive and linked with the later chapter 12 summary and conclusions. You must fill out chapter 4 before chapter 12. The same goes for chapter 11, identification of priority management needs, which should also be filled out before chapter 12. Chapter 5 asks about management and the protection management and monitoring of your property and its outstanding universal value. While Chapter 6 asks for the budget, funding and staff needs at your property and Chapter 7 asks you whether there is research being carried out related to your property. In Chapters 8, 9 and 10 you will be asked about education and outreach, how tourism is managed and how monitoring of conservation is carried out at the property. Chapters 11 and 12 are where you identify, assess and give information on the factors affecting the property and the management needs. In Chapter 13 you can tell us about what you think has changed at your property since becoming World Heritage. And in Chapter 14 you have the opportunity to tell us about the great work you're doing by providing an example of a good practice at your site. And finally, Chapter 15. Here you'll have to answer a few short questions on your experience of the periodic reporting process and you'll have the opportunity to suggest improvements. So, if you have reached Chapter 15, then you deserve a break. But before taking that break, don't forget to send your completed questionnaire to your national focal point. The preparation of this report should involve those who are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the property and be done in consultation with key stakeholders such as the advisory bodies, ECOMOS, ECROM and IUCN, local communities and civil society. For transboundary properties, it is recommended that the report be prepared jointly by or with close collaboration between the agencies concerned. And remember, if something isn't clear, you can find answers either in the guidance or on the website of the World Heritage Centre.